Kicking off the list at number 10, the upsweep. Remember last July when the ocean was on fire in the Gulf of Mexico due to a gas leak and we all watched like, What's going on? What is this? Why is there a hole to hell? Just all of a sudden it appeared. Well, five hours later, the company resumed pumping gas again. So sometimes when the ocean screams at us, we have to listen. Even if we're not exactly sure what it is we're hearing. Sound travels much faster underwater than it does in air. More than four times as fast. You ever crack your knuckles underwater? Try it when you get a chance. It sounds like a war zone underneath there. See, because sound travels so quickly, it's hard to find out where the signals or events are happening in the deep sea. The upsweep is an unidentified sound that was heard throughout the entire Pacific. Pacific Ocean. Again, quite loud. When the Pacific Marine Environmental Laboratory fired up its sound surveillance system back in 1991, these sounds were heard. This sound happens in real time as well. It's not sped up or altered in any way. These upsweeping sounds last a few seconds each ping. The source was roughly located around New Zealand and South America, and it peaks around autumn and spring. So whatever it is, well, it's probably hibernating. In our ninth spot today, we have the lonely whale. was first recorded in 1989 by an American military network listening for nuclear submarines. Instead, they captured this audio. It's of a blue whale with a weird high voice, with the main notes at a frequency of 52 hertz, a low bass note to human ears. To compare, most blue whales have a frequency between 10 to 40 hertz, so this whale has a very unique voice. But because of its voice, it can't communicate with the other blue whales. Hence why it's been given the name, the world's loneliest whale. Because it's just swimming around trying to make friends, but he can't call to them properly. Like, that broke my heart. Like, listen to this audio again. It literally sounds like this whale is crying out for help. have the Challenger Deep Moans. And if you guys are liking this video so far, then make sure you smash that like button because it really helps us out. So at the very bottom of Mariana's Trench, there is a point called the Challenger Deep, which is the deepest point known on Earth. Since it is so deep, it's been pretty hard to explore, so we really don't know what's down there. But in March of 2016, a recording picked up some very creepy low moans coming from down there. Basically, to even get this recording was a struggle. The microphone was encased in titanium and was slowly lowered down so it wouldn't be crushed by the pressure. It took them 23 days to get the microphone to the deepest point down there. Then that's finally when they picked up this. Again, the sound of a massive sea creature that we haven't discovered yet. Or at least that's what it sounds like, honestly. In our seventh spot today, we have Julia. On March 1st, 1999, a weird sound was recorded by the National Oceanic and Atmosphere Administration. The sound lasted for about 15 seconds and sounds like someone whining or cooing. Now, I don't know why they named it Julia. Like when I first listened to the clip, I was trying to hear someone say like, Julia, but I'm stupid. That's just the name that they gave to the sound. Could it be any more confusing? Anyways, the sound itself sounds like a sea monster moaning. People were taken aback by the sound because of how loud it was. To this day, researchers don't 100% know for sure what made that noise. But their theory is that it was just an iceberg running into the sea floor. Not as spooky, I know. Let's stick with Sea Monster. In our sixth spot today, we have the Aquatic Choirs. This is unfortunately the only sound that I couldn't find an actual recording of. But scientists in Australia have discovered that many different fish sing together at dawn and dusk, much like how birds do and then they wake you up in the morning and you're really cranky. 
Anyways, researchers from Curtin University in Perth started recording the sound that a number of fish make. Most of the sounds were from a single fish repeating the same call over and over again. But when two or more fish of the same kind joined in, the sounds would overlap and basically would sound like someone was humming or singing underwater. In fact, they discovered that the black jewelfish made a ba 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 sound. I think it's more like a pa pa pa. There you go. That's that's my impression of the black jewelfish. Either way, hearing that underwater would trip anyone out. Like imagine you're swimming off and you hear that you're like, "Yo, who's there?" Just a fish playing games, but still. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the train. This noise was given the name the train because it literally sounds like a train chugging by and blowing its whistle underwater. in 1997 by the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. They believe that the sound came from Antarctica's Ross Sea. So they think it's from icebergs dragging along the ocean floor. But it's still strange how it literally sounds like a train whistling. All aboard the Underwater Express. Moving on to number 4, we have the bloop. is probably one of the most famous ocean sounds ever recorded. In 1997, a large ultra low frequency sound was detected in the South Pacific. The sound only lasted for about a minute, but since then it was heard on a number of different occasions that summer, but has not been heard again since. Take a listen. This sound is very powerful and extremely loud. I mean, the hydrophone that picked up the sound was more than 3,219 kilometers away, and it managed to pick that sound up. That's crazy. Researchers have said that if it did come from a mammal, it would be a mammal larger than a blue whale. So people are thinking that it was a massive sea monster releasing an air bubble or something. Not only that, but the area where the sound originated from is close to the place where H.P. Lovecraft said his fictional character Cthulhu lives. So like, what the hell? Is Cthulhu real and he made that sound or what? Moving on to number three, we have the Devil's Cauldron. The Devil's Cauldron is a geothermal location in Nevada. There's a lot of legends in the area saying that this place is extremely haunted and cursed. Well, one man decided to see what the heck was up with the Devil's Cauldron and to do some investigating of his own. So he placed an iPhone 11 in the cauldron and recorded to see what it would pick up. He managed to record what sounds like screams coming from within. not expecting to capture that. What makes this even scarier is how berserk the phone went after capturing these screams. As a result, some people think that this spot is the portal to the underworld or something crazy like that. Moving on to number two, we have the upsweep. This is an unidentified sound that has been detected by hydrophones since 1991. Does that not sound like it's part of a horror movie soundtrack? Like I instantly got chills listening to that. It for sure is like a warning sound that something bad is approaching. What's even freakier is that when it's sped up, it literally sounds like warning sirens. It's creepy. And like a bunch of sounds on this list, we don't know what's causing it. Theory goes that it might have to do with undersea volcanic activity, but scientists don't know for sure yet. And in our number one spot today, we have the strange humming. 
Dude, this next audio recording literally gave me the heebie-jeebies. So you know in Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, how he goes underwater to save his friends and you hear those creepy little mermaid creature things humming? Dude, that's exactly what this sounds like. Take a listen. That's for sure the sound of a mermaid humming. For sure. To this day, researchers don't know what caused the sound because it's a mermaid, but they do think it's coming from some sort of organism. They just don't know which one. To this day, no known marine creature has been matched with that noise, meaning it's probably from a creature we haven't discovered yet. <clears throat> Mermaids, just saying. Starting off this list, in our number 10 spot, we have the train. The train is a sound that was first recorded on March 5th, 1997. It is often referred to as the train because, well, it kind of sounds like a train's whistle, or maybe like the sound of the wheels grinding against the tracks. But in my opinion, it just sounds like a ghost meetup. Despite the years it's been since this sound was captured, no one is entirely sure where it came from. The current belief is that it may have been from an extremely large iceberg in the Ross Sea near Cape Adair, but that is still only a guess. The steady hum might be the sound of the keel of an iceberg dragging across the sea floor. But what if it's not? Number nine. Shifting plates. I remember this back in 2013. I hope this rings a bell for some of you watching. In 2013, a woman in British Columbia over in Canada heard a trumpet sound, a low, slow, like a trumpet, or so she thought. At first, nothing came from these claims or videos, just a few comments saying, that's weird, which it is. But then it started to happen in areas all over the world, from Texas to Norway, so something's going on. It's the same slow, loud trumpet sound. Well, it turns out the sound was coming from the ocean this whole time. Because again, in 2018, a little more recently, the same low-pitched humming noise was heard in Hawaii, Kenya, and then Chile. So what we're hearing all these years are shifting tectonic plates. That's our best guess at this point. Undersea volcanoes, sure, just moving some deep sea furniture around. It's gotta be loud. Some folk believe that there's another dimension underneath the ocean floor, so maybe this is just a door opening and closing. Maybe this is the bouncer being like, oh, come on in, okay. Either way, I'm good here on land, never going down there. Number eight, quacker. Quaker Oats, Quacker Oats, the quacker. Not to be confused with the Kraken, he's a little bit different. This is the quacker. A loud quack was heard during the Cold War, so a little bit older. It was recorded while Soviet Navy ballistic missile submarines were heading through North Atlantic and Arctic waters. They heard quacking or a ribbit, something like like some sort of deep sea duck. Whenever submarines passed a certain area, this loud quack would come from deep below and it came from an object that was moving around. That's the mysterious part. That's why we threw it on our list today. The Soviets thought they were overhearing secret US tech, you know, like I guess some deep sea duck radar. I've heard rumors of that one, that's good. That was in a James Bond movie for sure. Scientists believe that it came from a giant squid, which is somehow more alarming than the ocean floor. Number seven, underwater, underworld. Back in 2018, a diver was exploring flooded caves in Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula. They were on the beach having a good time, then they saw this opening about a foot and a half wide, barely enough to fit one person, and this diver was like, eh. They went through, that's terrifying. I, first of all, bravo, hats off, that's extremely brave. But then they found this underwater tunnel that connected the Sakatoon Cave and the Dos Ojos Cave System. So this is a huge discovery. Because now this is considered one of the largest underwater cave systems in the world. In total, it runs about 347 kilometers long. I can't even fathom how long that is underwater. This cave has been untouched since the last ice age, rightfully so. And the 200 pockets inside are filled with bones, mine altars, fossils belonging to now extinct animals, it's basically a time capsule from 15,000 years ago. So if you're diving through small cave entrances, you know, don't go alone, or you might get stuck in time, apparently. Or you might find thousands of bones or a possible entrance to the underworld. Yeah, that's also a hot rumor for this underwater mine cave system. Ah, I forgot my flippers. Can't go, sorry guys. Have fun though, sounds like a great time. Number six, Titan Ocean. This one is literally out of this world. 
Coming from one of the many, many moons of Saturn, Titan, around 10 years ago, NASA's Cassini spacecraft detected water underneath its massive shell of ice. That's pretty exciting. To quote a Cassini team member, the search for water is an important goal in solar system exploration. And now we've spotted another place where it's abundant. NASA has also detected low frequency radio waves on this moon before. So perhaps there's something going on under the space sea. Our own ocean is mysterious enough, let alone receiving signals from an ocean in space. No thanks, I don't wanna even think about what's up there. Never Five, the Kraken. Jack Sparrow's worst nightmare. Is it real? Is the Kraken actually a real thing? Where does this come from? Well, maybe. The giant squid is not that far-fetched. Some creatures in the ocean are massive as is, like for example, this manta ray off the coast of Trinidad. If the internet didn't exist and I saw this in real life, I wouldn't be able to sleep at night. So of course, many sailors reported seeing the Kraken at one point or another. The ocean's terrifying. For ages now, sailors specifically from Norway and Greenland have all continued to share eyewitness reports of a giant sea monster, the Kraken. Apparently it had tentacles big enough to pull you and your mateys right off of the ship. In 1857, Danish naturalist Jepeta Steenstrup found a large squid beak and then soon after he was sent parts of another specimen from the Bahamas. So people were trying to help him out. So he concluded with all these gross puzzle pieces that the kraken is real and it's part of a species of giant squid called Archituthus dux, which is Latin for ruling squid. Very little is known about giant squid seeing as they're so hard to track, but we did get a photo of one back in 2005 and a video of one in 2013. Number Four, the whistle. If you can whistle, honestly, enjoy it. I've been trying for years, all I got is the one note. I'm like a bird. My lips are way too dry and weak, apparently. Nothing like this whistle, recorded in July 1997. This whistle was picked up by one hydrophone, meaning that scientists now can't pinpoint its location in the ocean, so we have no idea where it came from. But it was very loud, so we heard it. Somewhere in the Pacific, just, you know, somewhere out there. Good luck, just listen. That's terrifying. What do you think this is, really? The NOAA has compared the sound to volcanic activity, but because it could have come from literally anywhere, it could have been an iceberg. It could have been hydrothermal vents. It could have been the Kraken, who knows? What do you think? Number three, the green flash. I watch way too many superhero movies, so this next one had me pacing around my living room for a hot minute. Who is this? Who is this guy? Who's this green flash man? The green flash phenomena happens in the ocean. So far, we've only observed the flash above water, but I'm sure there's some mysterious happenings going on below, you know? I'm sure there's a few confused fish over there when it happens. This happens during sunset and sunrise. Best time to see the green flash is on a clear evening over water, and the air must be clean. So if you're in a polluted city, you're like, damn it. The reason we see a green flash is because of our boy, Roy G. Biv. This is the G in Roy G. Biv. Sunlight reflects off the atmosphere like a big old prism, and in turn, for thousands of years, humans have probably been like, what was that? I just saw a green flash. I keep seeing it every night. What is going on? They're probably so confused for thousands of years. No, it's not a Justice League villain. It's just the sunset. Number two, HMS Daedalus. This 19th century warship belonged to the Royal Navy. It was this big, class beauty equipped with 19 guns, and it launched at Woolock Dockyard in 1844. It was a big deal. Four years later, Captain McQA, along with his officers, and crew all set sail to St. Helena, but during their commute, they were visited. Yeah, this is why we have the guns on the side of the ship. If any trouble comes along, be it pirates, whatever the case, we're now equipped. Thing is, this visitor didn't come from the sides or the front or the back, it came from below, in the form of a 60 foot long serpent. And it hung around for 20 minutes, apparently, with its head breaking the surface of the water occasionally. The captain said it was so close under the ship that if it was one of his own crew members under there, he could have easily recognized their face. That's how clear the water was. It wasn't choppy or cloudy, it was a normal day, otherwise. So do we think 60 foot long sea snakes exist? Who's to say? I mean, considering this list, I'd say yeah. We barely explored our own ocean. And finally, number one, the Milky Sea phenomenon. This one you can see from space, so we're leaving the biggest and brightest for last, folks. The Milky Sea phenomenon was first observed back in 1864 by Captain Raphael Semmes. Captain Raphael Semmes journaled it aboard his CSS Alabama. He wrote about passing from the deep blue waters into a patch of water so bright that it startled him. The whole face of nature seemed to change, and with a little stretch of imagination, the Alabama might have been conceived to be a phantom ship lighted up by the sickly and unearthly glare of a phantom sea. That's not an exaggeration as well. This phenomena is something out of Avatar, really. It's so alien-like. Bioluminescence is part of the reason for this ghostly bright blue appearance, but sailors say there is something sinister about it as well. To this day, we don't fully understand how bioluminescence works, but it's continuing to blow our minds. For example, we just discovered a new shark. We just found a glowing shark. A glowing shark, what is happening here? The Milky Sea phenomenon is bigger than a glowy shark and it can span around 100,000 square miles. So you'll see it. If it's around, 
around, you'll probably see it. It lasts for a few nights too, so I don't blame these sailors for getting spooked out. In 2005, we got low orbit satellites to snap a pic of this phenomenon, but even so, we don't fully understand why it happens. But we're trying our best. Starting off this countdown, we have the sea monster. What you just heard is a noise no one knows much about. Seriously, researchers don't know what it's from. I don't know about you, but it sounded like a deep growl. For sure, that is the sound from some massive sea monster. It literally sounds like some evil creature cackling away or something like that. All I know is that I don't like the sound of that and I never want to encounter this creature. Now, because of the power and loudness of the sound, it can be assumed that whatever is making that sound is quite massive. In our number nine spot today, we have this underwater knocking. This knocking sound was picked up by an underwater hydrophone, and for a while it had people stumped until they were able to find the culprit. Before we talk about what this sound is coming from, imagine being in the deep, dark, icy waters and hearing that sound. It is straight up out of a horror movie, but as it turns out, the real source isn't quite as scary. This is actually the sound of a species of haddock fish. These types of haddock are a ray finned fish that can be found in the North Atlantic Ocean. The males of the species will produce this drumming or pulsating sound in order to attract mates during the mating season. Outside of the mating season, a similar sound is also produced, and that is known to be used during a aggressive encounters with other male fish. In our number 8 spot today we have the 52 Hertz whale. This whale has been nicknamed the loneliest whale in the world, but the truth is, we don't even really know if that's true because we've never actually seen it. This whale, which we don't know if it's male or female or what whale species it belongs to, sings its song like no other whale does. This whale was first heard in 1989 on a hydrophone, and while the calls were most similar to that of a blue whale, there was one striking difference and that was the the frequency of the calls. This whale calls at 52 hertz with regular blue whales calling between 10 and 40 hertz. Even fin whales are usually heard at 20 hertz, so it left everyone stumped as to what could be going on here. A researcher named Bill Watkins dedicated his life to trying to reveal what exactly was going on here, and while he passed away in 2004, he found that this whale was not only unusual, but totally unique. The biggest challenge is the fact that we cannot locate this whale. Their calls can be heard for hundreds of miles and trying to find one single whale in the vastness of the ocean is next to impossible. Many people have suggested that perhaps the whale is deaf, and this is what has led to its unique song, but of course without the whale, how would we possibly know for sure? In our number 7 spot today we have Slow Down. Slow Down is another sound that was captured in 1997, but this one was captured on May 19th of that year. The 90s was apparently the height of the capturing weird unexplained ocean sounds wave because wow, there are so many. This sound got its name because of the fact that the sound descends in frequency over about 7 minutes. Again, this is another sound I would have just assumed was ghosts, but luckily there are people out there who know more than me who continue to research these things and try to get to the bottom of these mysteries. This sound was so loud it was detected by different sensors nearly 5,000 kilometers apart from each other. Scientists were able to locate the sound as coming from somewhere off the Antarctic Peninsula. While they couldn't directly find the source of the sound, they used their deductive reasoning and it is currently believed that the sound might have been the result of a drifting iceberg as it scratched the sea floor until it slowly came to a stop. I guess the icebergs were just moving around a lot in the mid to late 90s. In our number 6 spot today we have the Psy Whale. Here we are again with another whale sound that just truly doesn't seem like it should be the sound coming out of any living creature, but hey, in the sea the rules are just different and everything's a little weirder. These whales can be found in subtropical, temperate and subpolar waters around the world. There is sadly a species that has seen their numbers decrease rapidly, especially due to the historical commercial whaling that took place in the 19th and 20th centuries. The exact number of these whales that currently exist is unknown, but they are a species that is currently listed as being threatened. Like many other whales, these guys use their voice to communicate with one another, and that is where this sound comes from.
Other than the sound that they're making, the increase in noise under the water, especially man made noise, is actually a threat to their existence. The sound can interrupt their normal behavior and drive them away from areas that are important to their survival. And sometimes intense exposure to noise can even cause one of these whales to strand and die, which truly is just awful. In our number five spot today, we have Star Wars. Okay, you might be wondering why something relating to Star Wars is on this list since we are talking about the sea, but just listen to the sound and then tell me what you think. sounds kind of like little fighter jets or something, right? Well, it definitely had some people stumped for a while when it was first heard, but luckily this one has a fairly simple and harmless explanation. The Star Wars sound is actually coming from dwarf mink whales. Apparently a lot of strange ocean noises end up either being attributed to whales or icebergs. Considering how creepy this sound can be when they have no explanation, I'm kind of glad to know that most things end up being relatively harmless and way less scary in reality. In our number for spot today, we have the Atlantic Cod. Atlantic Cod are known for their ability to produce clicks, growls, and thumps as their way of communicating. The clicks I'm about to show you are apparently intended to ward off potential predators, including humans, and I truly feel like it might be working. While this sound was recorded on a hydrophone, it's been said that divers who have encountered these fish in the ocean have also been able to hear these warning clicks so as to let them know not to get close. These fish also of course have different less aggressive sounds as well that they use for things like mating season or to be able to warn others of their kind of potential dangers that are lurking in the icy waters. In our number 3 spot today we have the ping. This is a sound that no one has been able to figure out where it is coming from. I'll admit this one wasn't captured by a submarine, but I had to include it because it is coming from the water and it is so mysterious that scientists and even the military still aren't sure what exactly is going on here. This sound can be heard in the Kikitalik region of the Canadian territory Nunavut and is coming from the Fury and Hecla Strait. This sound has been described by some as a ping and by others as a hum, but the main issue is that this area is a hunting area and whatever the sound is, it is scaring off all of the wildlife. Because of the reports of this mysterious sound, even the military came to investigate, but still, no one is exactly sure where this sound could have been coming from or what it could be linked to. For now, the mysteries that lay below the Arctic ice are destined to remain a secret. In our number two spot today, we have hmm. This sound is one that was captured on a hydrophone, and it truly sounds like someone just trying to add some infliction to their voice to ask a question. I'll give you one second to take a guess first. Did you guess another whale? Well, you'd be right then. This sound is coming from the North Atlantic right whale and is not just the sound of a super confused person. These whales are one of the world's endangered large whale species with there being only 400 left in the Atlantic Ocean. The sound you just heard is the sound they use to communicate with others of their species. Their sounds are usually low frequency moans or groans and they are used to indicate things like warnings, contact, aggression, or just other social signals in general. In our number one spot today we have boom. Okay, maybe the last one was a little too easy so here's another sound that I'm gonna let you guess and maybe it will be a little harder this time. Do you have a guess as to what that big boom was? Apparently that sound was caught on a hydrophone and it is coming from an underwater oil rig. Remember when we were talking about the man-made sound pollution of the deep sea and how it affects the marine life? This is exactly the kind of thing we were talking about. I don't have the solution on how to make it better or how to fix the problem. All I know is that it is one and honestly, how could it not be? That sound freaked me out while I was sitting comfortably at my desk researching, so I can imagine hearing it when I wasn't expecting it in the comfort of my own home, that just sounds awful. Mm -hmm.